Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Going to be looking at uh, graphic novels and history of graphic novels, maybe revisionist history of graphic novels, with special guest Warren Bernard today. Uh, before we dive in, Ed, tell us about Red Room. Red Room, issue one, going to be coming out in May 2021. This is... This is the cover <laughs> to to the, uh, the the regular issue. Uh, it's going to start coming out on a monthly basis. I wanted a cool new uh, horror comic that could be out on the stands. Didn't see one. Had to make it, Jimmy. And uh, it's going to start coming out monthly. These are the other various flavors of variant covers for uh, Red Room issue number one. Triple sized first issue, 64 pages. Just got it uh, completely put to bed and we're going to be sending that off to the printer in uh, about a week very excited if you want to read these uh, comics ahead of time you could hit my patreon patreon.com slash ed piscor have three issues up there right now put new strips up every tuesday you can find more of my work at patreon.com slash jim rug where i post out of print zines and mini comics like this catalog to my ballpoint pen uh, art show from a couple years ago I also post a lot of original art and behind the scenes stuff. So I've been going through a Street Angel story that I drew twice and uh, comparing those two stories. It's Street Angel's dog uh, that you see here. Uh, we've done this on the show in the past, compare the same comic by two different artists. That's basically what I'm doing there. So lots of my original art, lots of my hard to find stuff. And uh, basically what we do on Cartoonist Kayfabe, mostly looking at my comics, patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Warren, thanks so much for bringing these books, man. Well, uh, you know, we, we had talked about this, so we're going we're gonna to talk about the history of the graphic novel, and I want to start with The Contract with God. There's a lot of people that um, believe that, you know, Eisner kind of brought this about in terms of uh, graphic novels with this book. Now, the problem is, is that, one, the book is a series of short stories, doesn't sound like a novel to Doesn't me. Doesn't sound like a novel to me. And don't get me wrong, and, and this is a first edition, you know, signed by Eisner. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, the stories are great, the art is great. The, the, it was a different approach in terms of what, what he was doing. Nice creamy paper with some sepia ink, so you know it's highfalutin. Exactly. And so, and so here we get an epilogue, and like I said, it's, it's a series of short stories. So here's story number two, all right? This is 1978. The exact same year this came out, Jules Pfeiffer released this book called Tantrum. And Tantrum actually is a graphic novel. It's one story, goes all the way through. It's a story of um, basically a middle-aged crisis that's done by a you know, suburban middle-aged guy and, and his wife. And there's a profound difference between the two because of the fact that this is all one story. You know what's cool too, man? It was published by Knopf, so so real New York publisher, like with that weird like poorhouse press or yeah, Baronet, Baronet whatever yeah, the sure. hell that is. Yeah, and so and and Jules, you know, rightfully so, um, doesn't understand why Tantrum doesn't get the same cachet in terms of graphic novels as Contract with God. I don't think he gets enough credit as a cartoonist. Well, yeah, period. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, we should do like an old Jules Pfeiffer thing one of these days. So, and Pfeiffer had done other long-form stuff. He did Monroe, he did Passionella, so he was familiar with that, but I think this was his longest single story that he had put out. And like I said, the same exact year as Contract with God, and this is all but ignored by the comics community. Oh, yeah, man, because this wouldn't have fit uh, the, Scott, the, uh, s s the Scott McCloud rubric, right? Oh, one, right. One, one drawing per page? Oh, this is all splash page uh, graphic novel, they would call it. I love his drawing. It's, it, I'm glad you're flipping through there, Ed, to show off some of this stuff. To see what he does for values as well as textures, patterns, all yes. this stuff. It's incredible drawing. And it's interesting, you know, like you look at it now, you'll see these characters that their clothes aren't totally delineated. Uh, but you have a very clear impression of what they're wearing. Yes. Um, same with backgrounds and settings. Same kind of deal where it's, it's very expressionistic compared to a lot of the comics uh, that we typically look at here. Right, and, and to, to those people, it's like, well, you have to have panels on a page and stuff like that. It's like, well, no, you don't. And, and, and this was not unprecedented. So before this came along, just, just to show people, back in the 1920s, uh -oh. you had... Yeah, I hear, this, I hear Art Spiegelman. <laughs> <laughs> you had um, Franz Masseril, who actually invented the wordless graphic novel. Right, and so this is an original original printing from 1928 called the Idea, and in here, and this is all German expressionist stuff. Here we go. 
So here it is, one panel per page, um, only on the um, uh, rectos, only. And it tells a story of an idea and what happens with this guy. And of course, this is all, you know, if, if you watch um, Metropolis or yeah. Nosferatu or anything like that, the artwork is like is like right there. And so these are also gems of what design was like in Europe, you know, in, in the mid to late 1920s when, when this vocabulary... Now, mind you, this is the first guy really doing this. So he's, he's beginning the language. And, you know, some of it's clunky, some of it you can't follow, stuff like that, but every single page was gorgeous. How Kurtzman-esque are those faces? Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, you had, so you had him. So he did a couple of these. And then here in the United States, Lind Ward came along, and he did um, Madman's Drum, and he also did God's Man. Those were the two big ones. Warren, let me interrupt for yeah, one sure. second. Uh, so we're slowly working our way through this 100 Best Comics of the Century from the Comics Journal. This is 20th century, predominantly American or North American comics or what are covered. But several of these works, Lind Ward, uh, I believe it's a different different book of Lynn Ward's that's yeah, on yeah, the list. Yeah, Man is in there. Tantrum yes. is on the list. Uh, Contract with God on the list. Uh, so well represented in terms of the way that the comics journal critics viewed these works. And it's it's interesting to me to think about, like, uh, when is this published? 30s? Uh, it's like 1929, 1930. Uh, that Tantrum in the 70s, it's interesting to me to think of, like, who's buying these, who's reading these, because... Talk about not your spinner rack. Uh, yes. You know, this is a totally different audience that this stuff would have been going, uh, aimed at, and, and being uh, read by. So well, and, and it's a good, you raise a good point on this, because Pfeiffer, all right, he was after the New York, uh, he was the Upper West Side New York intellectual. The New, the New Yorker readers. New Yorker or, readers, right. And so, and, and so it wasn't aimed at the comics people. Of course, Eisner, he was aiming this not lower in any in any respect, but just a different segment of the population. And that segment of the population, of course, read Contract with God, and they didn't really know about this. Mm -hmm. And 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 by the way, I bought this when it first came out. So this is the copy I bought in 1978. God, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, so... Evergreen, though. I bought mine two weeks ago and read it this past week and loved it. So <laughs> <laughs> never too late. So, and, and in this, this is just a, a great example of, of Lynn Ward's design work. And Lynn... You know what? Let me check this spot. Because, like, you, you can see a lot of Seth's design aesthetics yes. Yes. Come, come from yes, this. Yes, very much so. And so he did these fabulous books, as did Mazariel. That was um, one... First published in 1930. And he did these just fabulous, amazing woodcuts about this drum. And co being coveted by a colonialist, the woodcut craft is incredible. <laughs> look, look at this stuff. It's just unbelievable. Every page is is something else, and um, beautiful, beautiful work. He did, I think, six or seven of these wordless graphic novels, and was acknowledged at the, as the master. Now, at the time this happened, we should say too for people watching at home. Several of these have been reprinted. Yes, in, they in have nice been reprinted. Editions, so they are. Uh, you, you can find. These. You can find them. Well, Tantrum. You know, if you if you want to find it, you can. It's not a rare book. I mean, it might be ten or fifteen bucks if it's yeah, that much. I, I don't know if I even paid fifteen for it. Yeah. So now, and and these, if you want to get these, are, and some of these monster reels have also been reprinted. And if you want to get these editions, by the way, these editions are fifty bucks. They're not a lot of money, but they give you the feel about if you were buying this in nineteen twenty eight, what would it be? And this is what you got. Yeah. So. All right, so now, a year later, I think this is 1931, Milt Gross, who one would not normally assume with a graphic novel, looked at Lind Ward and go, oh, I can do one of those. And in typical uh, Milt Gross fashion, he did this thing about all about the uh, uh, Klondike Gold Rush. And as it was with the other books, but this is pen and ink. This is not woodcut. Right. Yeah, getting much more into what we think of as traditional comics, cartoonists. Yes, uh, and and the vernacular. whole and the, right and the whole aesthetic here. This is this is actually the first one that you look at this. This is comics. Yeah. All right. So so Gross made this leap. Now there was another one that I should have brought that was done by William Gropper, but William Gropper was a a fabulous left wing cartoonist whose stuff was in the masses and the new masses and stuff like that, and his stuff was much more um, artistic. 
this is the first one where you go, oh, this is a cartoon. This is not these much more artistically formal processes that either Lind Ward or Masseril or Gropper went through. And this this is just a fabulous story. This is another one I assume has to be a big influence on Kurtzman. It's 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 one of Milk Rose's Tour de Force books, and just look look at this page, okay? Him coming in and throwing everybody out of the saloon, <laughs> and it's just page after page of this just beautiful artwork, great story, all done in pantomime, and if, and I don't know if you knew this, but he went out to Hollywood during the silent years and actually did spot gags for for various people. So, um, so here's where this transition is made in terms of graphic novels from this wordless artistic graphic novel to something that we would recognize more as being comics. This reminds me a lot of Chester Brown when he would start collecting some of his comics work and playing with page layouts where it'd be like, oh, maybe one panel on a page. I have no idea if this has any influence on him, but it stands out to me because of the way the page layout approach is just very different than what I think of as grids and lots of panels. This is right. this is so neat to see. And and, and by the way, and look at what what Gross is doing in terms of motion and action, time. Okay, there's there are all of these pieces of comics language that are actually here that you do not get in either of these. Right. So so this is really the the connective tissue between this world and this world is is this book. Uh, this has also been reprinted. Yeah, lots of editions of this. Yeah, right lots there. of editions. I have a small paperback version. Right, yeah. That, that one came out, I think, in the late 60s, early 70s. And and this one is very rare because it's got the dust wrapper on it. You you only see it... Most people see it like that. I am a little offended that you brought a third printing to our... Uh, <laughs> to well, our I, if I had known, I'd have brought my other one, which is a first printing that's got a, a drawing and a sign by Milt Gross. Okay? <laughs> so... Ne- I'll that would have looked good on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so so talking about connected tissue now. So this is 1930. You now have to go all the way to when was this out in somewhere in the 50s? 1950. St. John, who did a lot of romance comics, big publisher at the time, and of course now probably most people watching have never even heard of them. Um, but Arnold Drake is your writer here, who. Co- co-creates or creates Doom Patrol at DC a couple decades later, also tells the story in words and pictures about whenever the generation before him asked about health care, they were dismissed on the spot immediately. So Arnold Drake, long, you know, long comics history, but working for St. John's and comes up with this concept with Pittsburgh's own Matt Baker doing the artwork to do a picture novel. I have, by the way, I have never ever seen an original edition of this. Me either. I mean, I've this is never, a Dark Horse ever, reproduction. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I, I've looked for it and I've, I've never seen it. I don't know anybody who's got it. It's, it's that rare. You know, so. it's a comics company that would have been distributing through the distribution channels of the newsstand at the time. Like, it's yeah. hard to tell yeah. how many of these actually so, made it so out of the So 10 of them? Yeah. And you had to pulp 100,000? And, and this is all, again, this is all one story. This right. is not. This is not uh, chapters. It is not accumulating. It's. It's not calling like Galactus a graphic novel if you put them all together, right. which to me is kind of cheating. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no good definition for that because I have a couple examples here too that that follow what we think of as a what Marvel and DC would call a modern graphic novel, which is the serialized stuff. Put yes. in, put a spine around it. Yeah. But like you said, this is one complete story. I mean, this is your prototype for an original graphic novel. of today. Exactly. Exactly. And, and this is 1950. So this is 28 years before this. Um, so, uh, and, and this is one, this is, you can still find this reprint edition, right? This, this exists in at least a couple of reprint editions and the comics journal reprinted it in their 30th anniversary issue 277, along with some footnotes. So there's a lot of ways to get at this if you're interested. So why don't we, why don't we now jump, speaking of Harvey Kurtzman, by the way, uh, to the Jungle Book, which he tried to sell and he did sell as one original Ballantine paperback for 35 cents. Yes. Ballantine was a hip. Uh, company man, not not only on the forefront of just putting out paperbacks, but playing around with these kind of cartoon books and doing reprints of like Peanuts and things. Like they did, they did Robert Crumb comics in the '60s. It's like, how can you be underground if Ballantine is publishing? <laughs> you know? So, and and they published, uh, they published. I think it was the first. They published all the Mad paperbacks. Yeah. Okay. They also published the five EC paperbacks that came right. out in the 1960s. So, so they were pretty hip publisher. And they also published this, which is 
one huge graphic novel by the great Harvey Kurtzman. And you can actually see some of little Annie Fanny in this, um, among other things. So This is almost like an artist edition, too, by the way. Yeah, because, it's kind of yes. because it would have been just a small paperback. Yeah, you know? this, like yeah. Well, I mean, this size. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, like, it, yeah, it would have been... The, the, this is the original in terms of how it was originally published. Yeah. And that's clearly from the shot from the original artwork. You see the blue line underneath the the drawings and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can see yeah. some the pages lettering guides. It's a little more prominent than others, but right, exactly, the lettering guides. Yeah, so, and... Look at that lettering, boy. Yeah. This is incredible. I mean, this is post him leaving mad, Trump folding, after hum, hum, Humbug. Humbug. Yeah, Humbug. after Humbug, um, yeah. And this is kind of like his last... I think this is the last thing that he drew... Uh, you know, before, not doing layouts before, or anything. Right, before doing a little Annie Fanny. Right, yeah. but, you know, I mean, that's collaborative. Like, this yeah. is, if you want if you want a Kurtzman art fix, yeah, it's, this is kind of yeah, it. Yeah, it's this. And so, and this came out, I think, 1960? 59 or 60, yeah. Yeah, Copyright fi- yeah 59. 59, yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, again, predating a contract with God, all one story. So, outro by Dave Schreiner. This is great. Intro and outro. <laughs> And Spiegelman actually, th- this is nice because he hand lettered. Hand lettering. <laughs> well, and 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 they they taught together. You know, he he took the class and stuff like that. And this was done in '86. By the way, think about this because in '86 was when Mouse was released. It was when The Dark Knight was released. It was when Watchmen was released. Oh, we 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 know 1986. <laughs> <laughs> and this was released. And and once again, when you look at the history of the graphic novel, the way people normally do it, this is also overlooked, much to its detriment. So. So here we got 1960, and then we jump to, here we go. This oh, is going across the pond. Yeah, this is, I think, a 66 or 68, but it came out initially in 64, serialized first, uh, Barbarella serialized first, then I think eight-page increments, and then collected into this book in 1964. It sold 200,000 copies yeah. worldwide uh, coming out of the French comics market. Those numbers stagger my head to think about like what the equivalent of that would be now in terms of your nation's population yeah, sure. and then the yeah. number of the print run like yeah. you know th- this would be t- several million copies if it were if it were with the u.s population of today yeah absolutely uh, to and, scale. and and of course you know this is all uh, the movie edition there was another edition besides this that came out a little earlier before mm-hmm. the movie hit but it was so popular that um, roger vadim who was married to jane fond at the time went off and made this one of the weirdest and maybe one of the worst science fiction movies <laughs> I've ever seen in my lifetime. So, uh, but uh, you know, going through this, it was very, it was, it was nicely done. Jean Claude Forrest, and and this is much more European feel. It is, but the serialization and then collection, yes, that's the model for that's a, a model. lot of that's what you right. see on the bookshelf, uh, right, or, or on the Amazon today in terms of graphic novels, right. And so then, th- and, and this was. Again, typical of its time, and it's it's very French. The French always had naked women in a, in a lot of this stuff. There's a whole genre of single panel cartoons from the 50s where they they promo these things, French cartoons, and you were like, you buy it, and it's like, oh, you've got something bad, okay? <laughs> so and and so and and this was very nice stuff. Um, drawing was good. I don't know if they changed the color palette. Yeah, here we go. So they changed the color palette. And it's a nice book, you know. You think yeah. that this is contemporary with the early Marvel Universe comics being published, right? Right. And um, like I said, this is a later edition. So there was an early edition that was actually published in hardback. So it was. It was and Grove Press did, did three or four of these. There were a couple of Guy Guy Pilart, um graphic novels that were also done at this. Oh, <laughs> just. <laughs> It's funny because I was about to uh, pull, pull, out, pull out my copy. <laughs> so uh, um, Grove Press did, I think, three or four of these at that time. That all we would consider all of these graphic novels. Right. There's no other no other word for them. And this was this was so '60s. This was very, you know, you look at uh, Yellow Submarine after this, and you see a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, there, right, yeah. So here's the uh, novelization of the Beatles' Yellow Submarine. Uh, worth the flip through of what their novelization looks like. You know, um, not graphic novel maybe in Scott McCloud definition, yes. but in terms of graphics, combining images and text. Yes. Yeah. This is a pretty extraordinary book just on its own for production, in my you know in my opinion, 
production and design. Can't uh, fade, man. Blue me. This is like '68 or something. Yeah, you know? '68. So, yes. Yeah. So it's it's all it's uh, only a couple of years after this, and um, you know, again, just the, these great color things. One entire story, graphic novel. I'm sorry, you know, uh, I understand the formality of Scott McCloud's definition. I don't look at it that way. Now, so from the 60s... Get Hanoi Jane off my chair. My my, my dad will be mad if he comes around here. (laughs) Look, there's the famous photo of her. She went to North Vietnam and actually got a photo of herself riding the top of a... A Viet- North Vietnamese anti-aircraft gun. That's what I'm saying, man. That's right. why my dad... Uh, <laughs> oh, my I, I God. I can't be having her on this thing, man. Or else my dad won't invite me to Sunday dinner. So this is like 71, I believe? 71. Yeah, yeah. so this is 71. Man. Gil Kane came out with this. Again, um, the paperback stuff, we saw that. Uh, I wish we'd known I'd have brought the paperback of Jungle Book. Okay. So same size as Jungle Book, same concept, one whole thing. And here is... And this is Bantam. So, right, this so is Bantam. mainstream yes. big publisher. And here is Gil Kane. I love the GK down here. It's Go. such a cool... I, this is another one of those, like, layout-wise, you see some variation from what you would expect in a typical comic book. Yes, yeah. Uh, which well, I love. This um, is very European to do it with a lot of text. They would have it underneath, okay? But this is uh, very influenced by that. Yeah, he comes from that, man. What did... Uh, what did um, Howard Chaka say? Like that Valerian comic and, and some other weird... Uh, French comics were a big influence. Uh, were on the shelves at the uh, Gil Kane Studios when when uh, Chaikin was young and helping him out. It reminds me a lot of um, Steranko, some of the stuff he was doing and, and would do throughout the seventies, and uh, like with media scene and comic scene, um, just using you know a little bit of a different style of the word picture treatment. And also, Gil Kane, of course, did Savage around this time with a similar aesthetic and, and text treatment. Yeah. But I love how this looks. I yeah, love this the is design great. Yeah. for this page yeah. size. Pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah, this is great. So this is 1971. Mm-hmm. Then, and, and uh, then in 1976, this came out. Most people don't know about this. So this is, uh, uh, as it is with a bunch of these, it's a compilation of a series of stories that Metzger did for various alternative newspapers. All right? And so it's all combined into one story. It's very, it's Tolkien-esque, it's Lovecraftian, it's all of these things. It's, it's very, he was a great artist. He has a very uh, flowery line, as the case may be. But, so you got end papers. Good end papers. Good end, yeah, very nice end papers. By, and, and by this publisher that we don't know anything about, a graphic novel by George Metzger, two years before... And, and this is, like I said, more of a graphic novel than this, because this is one continuous story. So, uh, and Kyle and Weary, this is Huntington Beach, California. Mesker was out on, out on the um, California coast at the time, 1976. And to Jack Vance, famous science fiction author. And here we go. Um, Portions of this book have appeared in the underground publications, Mobius Strip, San Jose Red Eye, and Los Angeles Staff. So this gets into the old weekly thing that this originally occurred in the underground newspapers. And as they did with Jack Jackson's stuff, they put this into a graphic novel form. And, the, and it's beautiful. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen his, stu- his Metzger's work before, but this stuff is great. Maybe writing-wise, it's a little dense, all right? And, you know, it did, maybe it doesn't hang together as much as I would have liked, but he was a great artist. And if you go through, you know, Fanagor's and other stuff from the underground world, you'll see more of his, more of his work. It's a very flattering format. You know, it looks it looks fantastic on screen here, uh, as as the spreads and stuff, and it calls to mind things like uh, like Eternaut is a similar format, at least the version that I read. Um, you know, we haven't touched on any of the Japanese stuff, but like in their lending libraries in the fifties and things, like those were all, you know, big, thick, uh, complete adventures or, or stories, and uh, yeah, the the origins of graphic novel <laughs> certainly have. A lot of roots. Well, and and what I like is is I like this oblong format. Yeah. All right, it it reads differently, and so yeah. and so the rhythm is different than coming down a page that might be in six, nine, or twelve, or however many things. So uh, it I, reminds me of comic strips. Yeah. If you were to yes. take the ratio yeah. of a comic strip, that's yeah. kind of it. Wow, that's a really great. Yeah. Spread. So uh, you know, so how it's by the way, this is a rare book. It's not one that that you run across. Um, his underground comics are easier to get, but it's, you know, it's really nice. It's a, it's a bold effort to say the least. Um, visually 
absolutely fantastic, especially when you consider this is the you know this is the year before Star Wars came out, and this came out. That's an another amazing spread. Yeah, he was great. It's another one of those uh, illustrations of we're we're following his career here, basically. You know, this is years worth of work, man. So it's you know rough around the edges at the start, and you're just watching him tighten up more and more. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so so there it is. But like I said, the key thing about this is. This is the first book that I've seen that, mm -hmm. right? Out of all this stuff, okay, this is the first time that I've seen this used. So, yes, with all due respect to Eisner, I respect him. I love him. I think that he's done some of the, some of the best work in comics, but no. <laughs> <laughs> the thing we've learned here today is that uh, the best salesman gets the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what do you have out there? You can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug to find my outer print, hard to find zines and mini comics, lots of original art, lots of process talk. Patreon.com slash jimrug. Warren, want to thank you for bringing this great collection of stuff. Jimmy, thanks for supplementing uh, the conversation with the books that you brought. Uh, Red Room, issue one, coming out in uh, May 2021. Horror comics for the new millennium, Jim. Uh, each uh, issue is going to be completely self-contained. Uh, it's going to be a monthly comic. You could pre-order yours today through the Fantagraphics website at my link tree below, or just go to your comic shop, get it put on your pull list. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on in 2021. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Can't believe Chandler isn't the first graphic novel, Jim. You've got to change the title <laughs> of that old video. Give us a lesson of more man. We're going to be on our way. Read more graphic novels. <laughs>